The wind howls like a beast unchained. Ice lashes against wooden planks. Men wrapped in wool and fur grip their oars as waves crash high as houses. Their breath turns to frost, their hands roar and cracked. No shelter, no warmth, no fire. For weeks, they sail through the blackest seas, sleeping in the open, eating cold food, their faces frozen with salt and snow. And yet, they survive. Not just survive, they thrive. They raid, trade, conquer, and cross oceans thought impossible for their time. But how? How did Viking sailors endure the brutal cold of the North Atlantic without fire, the one thing every human has depended on since the dawn of time? This mystery baffled historians for decades, until the Earth itself began to whisper its secrets, from ship graves, frozen camps, and the sagas of old. What they reveal will change how we think of Vikings forever, because they didn't simply brave the cold, they engineered around it. Imagine it, a vessel made entirely of pine and oak, sealed with tar, tied with hemp rope, covered by a wool sail soaked in animal fat to repel the icy spray. Every inch of it, flammable. Every breath of wind, a risk. Lighting a fire on such a ship would be like striking a match inside a powder keg. One misplaced ember, one gust too strong, and the entire crew would vanish beneath the waves. But the Vikings weren't helpless against the cold. They were innovators. Where others relied on fire, the Norse relied on craftsmanship, chemistry, and cleverness. They heated themselves, not their ships. Their clothing worked like a living furnace, layer upon layer of tightly woven wool trapped warm air close to the skin. The lanolin, natural oil within the wool, repelled moisture and kept the fabric warm even when wet. They wore sheepskins turned inside out, cloaks lined with fur from bears, wolves or seals. Even their hats and mittens were insulated with feathers or moss. When the cold became unbearable, the crew huddled together under the sail. A heavy wool sheet lowered over the deck, turned into a windproof canopy. The trapped body heat of dozens of men could raise the temperature enough to melt frost from their beards. Their warmth came not from fire, but from each other. So when the sea froze around them, they did not curse the cold, they used it. They learned to breathe slower, to move less, to conserve energy. Their discipline became their heat. Because for the Vikings, warmth was not comfort, it was survival. Centuries later, when the first Viking ships were pulled from their watery graves, archaeologists looked for evidence of warmth, a hearth, a brazier, anything that spoke of fire. They found none. At Roskiller Fjord, five vessels, warships, traders and fishing ships, emerged from the mud. Tools, barrels, ropes and remnants of food were perfectly preserved. But nowhere, in any corner of those ships, was there a single scorch mark. Instead, what they found was even more fascinating. Tiny fragments of animal fur, patches of wool, traces of moss packed between planks, proof that the Vikings used natural insulation. They lined the bottoms of their ships with straw and sealskin to keep the cold from creeping up from the boards. They slept on animal hides, thick enough to hold warmth, soft enough to cushion against frozen wood. In the Oseberg burial ship, archaeologists uncovered elaborately woven blankets and cloaks, not decorative, but functional masterpieces. Each thread spun by hand, each weave so dense it could block wind like armor. And while these artifacts came from burials, their patterns matched the garments described in sagas, proof that Viking seamstresses were as vital to exploration as the warriors themselves. No fires, no furnaces, only fabric, fur, and fortitude. So how does a man survive weeks in temperatures that could freeze flesh in hours? The answer lies not in heat, but in insulation, not in flame, but in understanding nature. The Vikings mastered the balance of warmth and endurance long before modern science could explain it. They layered wool against linen, fur against hide, trapping air like invisible embers. They rubbed seal fat into their garments to block wind and snow. They filled the seams of their ships with a mixture of tar and moss, a natural sealant that also stopped cold drafts from rising through the deck. Their diet added another hidden advantage, high in fat, fish oil, butter, dried meat and whale blubber, it fueled their bodies like slow-burning coals. 
When food grew scarce, they chewed dried kelp or fish skin for energy, not luxurious, but life-saving. And at night, when the sea fell silent and frost crept across the hull, the crew curled together beneath shared furs, letting breath and body heat form a fragile warmth in the dark. Some sagas even tell of stone warmers. Smooth rocks heated on land and wrapped in cloth, carried aboard to slowly release warmth during long voyages. Primitive, perhaps, but effective. They didn't heat their ships, they became the heat. Every man, every stitch, every heartbeat, part of a living furnace moving through frozen seas. No sparks, no smoke, no fire. Only the relentless flame of human will and the quiet genius that let the Vikings sail where no one else dared. Across the North Atlantic, from Greenland to Iceland, fragments of Viking clothing still whisper of a forgotten brilliance. What they reveal isn't savagery, but science. The Vikings weren't crude men draped in ragged hides, they were textile engineers, masters of layering, weaving and adaptation. Every thread had purpose, every layer, a strategy. They understood the enemy wasn't the cold itself, but the loss of body heat. So they fought that loss with a system so refined it could rival modern expedition gear. At the base, a layer of fine linen wicked away moisture from the skin. Above it, soft-spun wool insulated warmth warm even when drenched by seawater, and outermost came the coarse wool, thick and rugged, woven from hardy northern sheep. Its natural lanolin oil repelled water like a shield. But the Viking genius lived in the details. Their sleeves, yes, even the sleeves, became weapons against frost. Saga records and archaeological discoveries describe a daily ritual unlike any other. Before setting sail, Women or crewmates would sew each man's sleeves shut at the wrists, using waxed thread to create a near airtight seal. Every morning, sealed for warmth, before battle or landfall, cut open with a Sayax knife. Imagine that, men standing on the deck silent in the dawn, while others stitched their sleeves closed, not as decoration, but as armor against the wind. In temperatures that could freeze flesh within hours, a loose cuff wasn't a minor flaw. It was a death sentence. This ritual wasn't superstition. It was survival science, precision disguised as simplicity. Each Viking carried with him an invisible fortress, a portable microclimate crafted from wool, fur, and genius. Their clothing didn't just cover them. It transformed their environment. It trapped air, deflected water, and built a small, stable world of warmth against the storm. Archaeologists at Herjolfsnes, Greenland, discovered that Viking wool wasn't uniform. It was engineered. Outer garments were woven from coarse outer fleece, long, tough fibers that shed snow and water. Inner tunics were made from the soft underwool, finely spun to trap heat. Together, these layers worked like a living thermostat. Even when drenched in seawater, Viking wool could maintain warmth a property modern synthetics still struggle to match. This was not luck, it was understanding, an ancient mastery of material science born from necessity. Their cloaks often doubled as blankets. Their boots were stuffed with dry grass or moss, natural insulation that wicked away sweat and trapped air. When the sea winds screamed and frost gathered on their beards, they weren't just enduring the cold, they were outsmarting it, each Viking, wrapped in his layers, carried a world of warmth that moved with him, a fragile flame sustained by fabric, knowledge, and will. But even the finest garments could not fight the night. When the sun sank and the ocean froze over like glass, the real test began. No man could survive the long Arctic night alone, not even a Viking. So they turned to something both intimate and ingenious, Forget the image of the solitary warrior wrapped in furs. Real Viking sailors slept together, not for comfort, but for heat. They used something called hud fat, great sheepskin sleeping bags lined with fur, waterproofed with animal fat, large enough for two grown men, two hearts, one rhythm, one living furnace. Inside these makeshift cocoons, 
the temperature could rise by 15 to 20 degrees Celsius compared to the freezing air outside, and they kept the warmth cycling. When one man rose to take watch, the other slipped into the same spot, inheriting the heat his crewmate had left behind. The system never cooled. The ship breathed, men rotating in shifts, the hud fat staying warm like a shared heartbeat beneath the stars. This wasn't weakness, it was strategy. They didn't fight the cold as individuals, they fought it as a single living organism. Teamwork, not bravery, kept them alive. Discipline, not defiance, carried them across the Arctic seas. They didn't need fires to stay warm. They had each other, and that was enough. But if fire was banned aboard, how did they eat? The sea may be full of fish, but raw fish alone cannot fuel a Viking's body in freezing conditions. The answer came in the form of cold provisions foods designed for long voyages and low temperatures. Archaeological digs at Hedeby and York reveal preserved stores of dried fish, ship biscuits, fermented dairy, and cold porridge mixtures. Before a voyage, cooks on shore would prepare massive batches of porridge mixed with butter and salt, letting it harden into a dense, nutrient-packed paste. It could be eaten directly or softened with cold water, this crude but effective food supplied up to 3,000 calories per day, essential fuel for rowing and exposure to the cold. Hard bread, smoked meat, fermented milk, all designed to last for weeks without spoiling. Vikings didn't cook on the waves. They planned around the need to. The image of Vikings lost for months at sea is a myth. In truth, they had an entire hidden infrastructure a chain of shore bases stretching from Norway to Newfoundland. Recent excavations reveal over 200 known Viking harbors, seasonal camps, and winter stations. These were not just landing sites, they were operational hubs with workshops, hearths, storage, and dwellings. At Torxey, England, a 55-hectare Viking winter camp showed hearth systems, ironworking areas, and living quarters. These were the true places of warmth where ships were repaired, food cooked, and men restored before the next leg of their journey. On land, they used fire freely. At sea, they never dared. Their logistics were astonishing, rotating between known camps, timing voyages to seasonal patterns, and always ensuring the next fire was never too far away. It wasn't chaos, it was organized endurance, so why didn't they adapt fireproof technology like the Romans or Byzantines, who used onboard stoves centuries earlier? Because every ounce of safety came at a cost. Speed. A hearth meant weight. Metal meant cargo loss. And on the icy seas of the north, speed could mean life or death. A lighter ship could outrun a storm, could strike, raid, and disappear before an enemy's reinforcements arrived. For Vikings, survival wasn't about comfort. It was about momentum. They sacrificed warmth to gain power. That trade-off made them legends. Centuries later, archaeologists decided to test Viking endurance in the real world. In 2007, a full-scale reconstruction of the Skuldalev II longship, called Sea Stallion from Glendalo, set sail from Denmark to Ireland. No fire, no heater. Only authentic Viking clothing, sleeping bags and food. For weeks, the crew endured the freezing winds of the North Sea. But they survived, not through modern gear, but through the same ancient principles, layered wool, shared heat, strict watch rotations, and the discipline to never light a flame. Body temperatures stayed within safe limits. Morale stayed high. And history proved itself right. Vikings didn't need fire, they had knowledge. Physical endurance was only half the battle. Mental resilience was the other. Excavations at Viking camps have uncovered over 300 gaming pieces, carved boards, dice, figurines, and tokens. Vikings played games not just for fun, but for focus. They understood, perhaps intuitively, that a calm mind could withstand more than a warm body. Storytelling, music, and friendly competition kept their spirits alive when the cold bit hardest. In their games, they found fire of another kind, the one that burns inside. What do you think? Could you survive the frozen seas? If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Thanks for watching.